Mock exam for normal distribution, math SL. Um, the lifespan of a particular species of insect is normally distributed with a mean of 57 hours and a standard deviation of 4.4 hours. Um, the probability that the lifespan of an insect of the species lies between 55 and 60 hours is represented by the shaded area in the following diagram. This diagram represents the standard normal curve. Okay. So, like, normally, the way you would draw this uh, for an X distribution, like a regular distrib normal distribution, is what you do is you would put 57 as the mean in the middle, and then the standard deviation is 4.4, so here you would have 57 plus 4.4, which is 61.4, and here you would have 57 minus 4.4, which would be 52.6. Okay. So you would have these three marked, and then they come down here and say, oh, um, we're looking at the probability that the lifespan is between 55 and 60. So that would be like here, 55 to 60. Uh, maybe that's not such a good drawing. I need to put it closer to here and closer to here. Okay, so they're looking at this here. And then they say, oh, wait a second, but we're going to use the standard normal curve. And the difference between this normal curve and the standard normal curve is the standard normal curve has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So um, instead of having a mean of 57 and a standard deviation of 4.4, we're looking at uh, 0 and 1. And if you remember, in the book, they call this the Z distribution. Okay, so we know to go from the x distribution to the z distribution, we use a, um, a conversion, which is x minus mu divided by sigma. So whenever we want to change an x value into z value, we just use this conversion here. So it says, uh, if they're doing, if they're going to represent the area from 55 to 60, which for the x distribution, it just looks like this, from 55 to 60. How do we transform 55 and 60 into the standard normal? We use this formula here, z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. So, for example, we're going to take the 55 and we're going to change it to a. So to change uh, the 55 into a, we're going to say, okay, uh, 55, which is the x value, we're going to subtract the mean, which is 57, and we're going to divide it by the sigma, which is 4.4. Okay, so that's going to be negative 2 divided by 4.4. And if we do that on the calculator, we'll get negative 2 divided by 4.4. We get negative 0.455. For A. Okay, so this would be negative 0.455. What about for B? What do we get? So B, we get it the same way. We're going to put in this time, we're going to put 60. So we get 60 minus 57 divided by 4.4. So that'll be 3 divided by 4.4, which is. Point six one six eight two six eight two. Remember, we want to keep three significant figures. Um, so write down the values for a and b. So we're going to put a equals negative point four five five. B is equal to positive point six eight two. And if you look at uh, the drawing, that kind of matches up because the a value looks like it's slightly to the left of zero closer to 0 than it is to negative 1, and the B value, it looks like it's closer to maybe 1 than it is to 0. So those answers make sense. Now remember, in the old days, we would use the standard normal curve to uh, look up values on a table. Now we can do that with the calculator. So, uh, and then it says, find the probability that the lifespan of an insect of the species is uh, more than 55, between 55 and 60. So let's first do more than 55. So uh, we're going to, um, here's uh, 57 in the middle, 55 is about here. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find uh, this probability here. And to do that, we're going to use second distribution, normal CDF, not PDF. And the left boundary is going to be 55. And the right boundary is going to be infinity, positive infinity. How do we write that? We write 1, uh, double E, 99. And the standard, the mean is 57. And the standard deviation would be 4.4. And so this area here would be 0.675. Now what about between 55 and 60? That's even easier. We just do second distribution, normal CDF, and in this case, instead of 55 to infinity, we're going to put 55 to 60. 55 to 60. And the answer is 0.428. Okay. Uh, B, 90% of the insects die after T hours. Represent, represent this information on a standard normal curve diagram similar, similar to the one given in part A, indicating clearly the area representing 90%. Okay, so we're going to draw the normal distribution. And then 90% uh, of the insects die after T hours. So where is T? Well, if 90% uh, die after T hours, then... Uh, I think it would look kind of like this, where T is like way to the left, because this shaded region here is going to be 90% of the standard, uh, of the normal distribution. Okay, so here we've represented it. The mean value, of course, is 57, which is in the middle. Um, okay, and so we've represented it on this, this, uh, this normal distribution. Um, then it says find the value of T. Okay, so um, this is the tricky part. Remember that the calculator is kind of dumb. It can only figure out uh, T if you give it the region, the area of the region, the yellow area of the region to the left of T. If you give it the red region to the right of T, the calculator cannot figure it out. It'll always think that you're giving it the left region because that's the only thing it's programmed for. To do this, we're going to use the second distribution inverse normal function. And the inverse normal function wants the area. doesn't want the area to the right of the line. It wants the area to the left of the line. So if the right of the line is 0.9, what do you think the left area is? It's 1 minus 0.9, which would be 0.1, or 10%. Uh, then we're going to put in 57, because that's the mean. And then we're going to put 4.4, which is the sigma. And then we're going to see what this value for t is. It's going to be 51.4. Okay, so t is going to be 50, oops, 51.4. Okay, all right, that's it for page one. Let's move on. Okay, number two. A van can take either route A or route B for a particular journey. If route A is taken, the journey time may be assumed to be normally distributed with a mean of 46 minutes and a standard deviation of 10 minutes. If route B is taken, the journey time may be assumed to be normally distributed with mean mu minutes and standard deviation 12 minutes. Okay, so this is something that should uh, get your guard up. This is the, um, I don't think any of these normal distribution problems are really hard. But the hardest type of normal distribution problem we're going to do is the one where you don't know mu or sigma. Those are the ones that are math SL problems and not math studies problems. Okay, so first of all, uh, route A is taken the jury time. So we're going to draw a picture for the route A. Route A is going to be like this, and we know that the, the, the mu is going to be 46 minutes. And the standard deviation is 10, so these lines here are going to be 56 and 36. This is for A. Route B, on the other hand, is uh, we don't know where the um, standard deviation, or the uh, mu is. And actually, oh, look at this. It actually says the standard deviation is 12 instead of 10. So it's going to be more spread out 
than, than the A distribution. The B distribution is going to be more spread out, and the standard deviation lines are going to be at mu plus 12 and mu minus 12. Okay. For route A, find the probability that the, that the journey takes more than 60 minutes. Okay, so for route A. And this is going to be easy because for route A, mu we know is 46 and standard deviation we know is 10. So to figure out if the journey takes more than 60, which is about here, more than 60, it's pretty easy. We already have everything we need and we're just going to use um, normal CDF, which is the easiest function to use to. Are we going to put negative infinity for the left bound? No, because the left bound is going to be um, uh, 60, right? So we're going to put 60 for the left bound because this uh, value here is 60. Okay, 60. And then the upper limit is going to be negative infinity, which is also known as 1EE99. E uh, and we do need to also put in a mu and a standard deviation. The mu is going to be 46, right? And the standard deviation is going to be plus 10. Okay. All right, and so this red region here is going to be 0 0.0808. Zero 0.0808. Okay, so that's really easy for route A, because route A, we know the mu and the standard deviation. That's an easy type of problem. Now, for route B, the probability that the journey takes less than 60 minutes is, um, is 0.85. Okay, so now we have a little bit more information about route B. What we know is that um, less than 60 minutes is going to be a 0.85 region here, okay? And it says to find the value of mu, which we don't know, right? We do know that the standard deviation is 12. Okay, so um, whenever you have a problem where you don't know standard deviation or you don't know mu or you don't know both, uh, keep in mind that you need to take your uh, x distribution and transform it into a z distribution. Okay, the z distribution has, uh, since you know that the mu and the sigma for a z distribution are 0 and 1 respectively, there's, uh, it's a lot easier to do the problem. So let's change it to a z distribution. It's going to look very similar. The difference is the mu we know is going to be one, 0 and the sigma is going to be uh, 1 and negative 1. Okay. And then we're going to figure out, like, where is the 85% um, marker line, which we don't know, okay? So we know that this red region is 0.85. And uh, now that we know the standard deviation and mean, we could just use, we could just treat it as a regular problem and do second distribution inverse normal and say, oh, the area is 0.85, and since... Uh, the calculator wants us to give it us the left, give the left area, and since the red region is to the left of the marker, we can just type in 0.85. No problem. And mu and sigma, we're going to use 0 and 1. Even though the real mu and sigma are not 0 and 1, we're doing this to make our life a little bit easier. So based on this, we already know that the marker is at 1.04, which is slightly to the right of the um, standard deviation marker plus 1, right? So now we know that the z value that corresponds to um, this line here, 60, is 1.04. And if we know that the z value here is 1.04, and we know that the x value that corresponds to the z value is 60, we have all the data we need because we know that to transform between at z and x, we use this equation, z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. So we could just plug in 1.04 for z, and we know that x is 60. We just don't know mu, right? And we do know sigma. The sigma is 12. So now it's just a, a very simple algebra problem. 
and we can uh, solve this. We can multiply both sides by 12, so that will be uh, 12 times 1.04 on the left. 12 times 1.04 on the left. It's going to be 12.48 on the left. Then uh, that will be 12.48 equals 60 minus mu, which is going to be equal to um, 60 minus 12.48. Okay, that means that mu is equal to 60 minus 12.48, which is 47.52. I can just write it up here, 47.52. Okay, and then we'll look back at the original picture to see if that makes sense. So, yeah, this is 47.52. That looks like it's in the right, about the right position. Okay, all right. So... Uh, part C. The van sets out at um, 6 a.m. and needs to arrive before 7. Which route should I should it take? Justify your answer. Okay, so um, that basically means that the van needs to arrive in one hour. Okay, um, let's see. One hour is 60 minutes. Okay, if you take uh, route A, what's the probability that you're going to take longer than 60 minutes or be late? That would be 0 .0808, so about 8.08%. .08%. If you take route A, you've got an 8% chance of being late. What about part B, or uh, um, route B? For route B, what's the probability that you are going to be um, more than uh, 60 minutes late? Well, um, the probability that you're going to take less than 60 minutes for Route B is 85%, right? Less than 60 is going to give you 0.85. So more than 60 is going to give you 0.15. So for Route B, the, the probability you're going to be late is 0 um, 1, uh, it's going to, it's going to be 0.15, right? So the probability that you're late with Route B is going to be um, 0.15. And the probability that you're late with route A, we just found it is uh, 0 0.0808, right? 8%, 8.08%. 8 so the, the probability you're going to be late with route B is bigger, okay? So let's say, uh, which route should we take? We should take uh, route A. Um, 8.08% .08 chance of being late less than Route B probability of 15%. Okay, so we said Route A and we gave the justification of that Route B, you have a higher percentage chance of being late. On five consecutive days, the van sets out at six and takes Route B. Find the probability that it arrives before seven on all five days. Okay, so now we're kind of leaving the normal distribution world and we're going back into um, probability. So the probability that you're going to be late if you take Route B, remember, is 0.15, right? So that's our uh, p-value. And basically it says, uh, what's the, if you take Route B on five consecutive days, what's the probability that you arrive before seven on all five days? So this is like a really simple probability problem. It means uh, you're on time five days, which means 0.15 times 0.15 times 0.15. You're going to take 0.15 for each day. And you're just going to multiply them together, and there's no, you know, there's only one way for that to happen. You have to be on time every single day. Oh, I'm sorry. What I was doing there, I'm multiplying. 0.15 is actually the chance you're going to be late, and we want to be on time. So it's not 0.15 times, uh, 0.15 five times. It's 0.85 times itself five times. Okay? So this represents each of the five days. Every day you want to be on time, so you're going to get 
uh, use the 0.85 probability and you're multiply it together five times. This is also known as 0.85 to the fifth power. So let's see what that is equal to. 85 to the fifth power, 0.444. Okay. All right. And uh, part two. What is the probability arrived before um, 7 o'clock on at least three days? Um, so at least three days, could be four days, could be five days. doesn't matter which day you arrive three days uh, out of five. So in this case, we can recognize that it's a binomial, um, a binomial uh, distribution. And so in this case, we want, what we want is, the success here is to arrive on time. So um, I, before I said the probability is 0.15, actually the probability, you need to put in the success probability, which is going to be 0.85, right? So here we're looking at P equals 0.85. How many trials are we going to have? Because it's a binomial distribution. We're going to have um, three, uh, I'm sorry, five trials because it's five days. And then how many successes are we looking for? We're looking for um, uh, three successes. Actually, to be exact, we're looking for x is greater than or equal to three successes. Okay. And uh, remember, the calculator can calculate. Um, a binomial CDF, but what the pro what the calculator is able to calculate is like x is less than or equal to something. So let's say we're going to calculate probability as x is less than or equal to two. How does how does calculating the probability that x is less than or equal to two going to be helpful in figuring out the probability that x is greater than or equal to three? Well, actually, if you have probability of x is less than or equal to 2, you could see, see that's the opposite of the probability of x is greater than or equal to 3. So we could subtract it from 1. Okay? And remember, this is like one of those cases where the calculator is kind of dumb. It can't figure out the probability that x is greater than something. It can only figure out the probability that x is less than something. So what you do is you, you subtract it from 1. Uh, the probability that x is less than something. And do you notice how you have to use 2 here instead of 3 because it's greater than or equal to 3, less than or equal to 2? You can't put less than or equal to 3 because then you would be counting 3 twice, okay? Remember, binomial distribution, uh, each one of these uh, of, um, occurrences x, it's, um, it's, it's not a uh, zero chance of it happening. It's, there's a, there's a, numeric chance of it happening. So even if you say the probability that x is going to be 3, that's 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 something. So you can't assume that that has zero dimensions and it's nothing. And Okay. All right, so let's figure out how to do this. So we're going to do second stat, oops, I'm sorry, second distribution binomial CDF, because in this case we want to do a, uh, we want to sum up uh, the probability that it is 0, 1, or 2. So then we use CDF and not PDF. The number of trials is 5. The number, the P value is going to be 0.85. And the X value is going to be, um, 2. So we're going to find what that is, and then we're going to subtract it from 1. Oh, it's very small. It's 2.7%. So we're going to subtract that from 1, and that's going to give us the probability that x is greater than equal to 3. It's 97.3% um, or 0.9, oops, 0.973, because this is going to be 1 minus 0 0.0266. Okay, and so that's it for the mock exam.